Hi people, it's me, Ani, and my pronouns are she and her, and welcome back to my channel for a new recent release video, because as promised, it is the next day. But anyway, the first book on this list is called Jasmine is Haunted. This story is a middle grade urban fantasy following a young queer Latinx main character who discovers that she's being haunted after her father's death. This story is absolutely so fantastic and it's so good. First of all, the world building is so magical and it's so atmospheric and I loved like the ghosts and the conversation surrounding grief and family and loss and everything like this book is excellent. Second of all, the friendships are so wholesome and so lovely and so wonderful. Third of all, the characters are so well developed and so distinct. Fourth of all, the queer representation is excellent and it's fantastic and it felt so normalized and so wholesome and so awesome. This book is absolutely so fantastic and so excellent and personally, I preferred it over the insiders. For those who don't know, this book was on my October TBR due to the author's reputation and it's so good. I just really, really enjoyed it. So anyway, with that said, I rated this book four out of five stars and I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Deal Run Home. This story is a middle grade contemporary following a young, deaf main character who's being neglected by her father and there's a trigger warning on this book for sexual assault, parental neglect, and parental abuse. This story is absolutely so excellent and it's so well done. First of all, I love flavor stories because the writing was so lyrical and so pretty. The characters are so well developed and so distinct. The deaf disability representation was awesome and so well done because I truly was so emotionally invested from the beginning to the end. This book was so good. I really, really enjoyed it. Like I was so invested in it. I was hooked. I was locked in. This book is so excellent and I should definitely read more books by this author before. I think I've DNF'd a few by them in the past, which is why I had low expectations for this book, but this book definitely exceeded those low expectations and I just really, really enjoyed it. Like the whole thing was so good. So anyway, with that said, I rated this book four out of five stars. I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called The Dark Becomes Hall. This story is a YA horror that follows a young bisexual Asian main character who's trying to save her sister from being possessed by a demon. And this book was absolutely so fantastic and so excellent. I really, really enjoyed it. I wasn't expecting to really, really enjoy this book just because historically I tend to dislike horror because I realized recently that it's because typically it's so hard to imagine in my head because when I'm reading it's like a movie is playing in my head and with fantasy, contemporary, and historical fiction that's so much easier to imagine than a horror book. I don't know why exactly but anyway the world building this book was so excellent and so atmospheric and so detailed. The plot is so engaging. The mystery was so captivating. The characters are so well developed and so distinct. The romance is so cute. I loved all the family dynamics. The Asian representation was so great, as well as the queer representation. This book is so good and it definitely deserves all the type and so much more. So with that said, I rated this book four out of five stars. I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Class Act because after I read a fantasy or like a horror or thriller or something like that, I need to read a simple like contemporary book as a palette cleanser. And with that said, I had pretty low expectations for this book for that reason and also for the fact that I think that I've DNF'd all of the author's previous books in the past, so I was quite surprised. When I rated this book four to five stars because it's so good. This story is a YA contemporary following a new transfer high school student who's fake dating somebody to help her win student council. This book is absolutely so fantastic and it's so good. First of all, I love fake dating. I'm a sucker for fake dating. It is one of my favorite romantic tropes ever. And it was so good because the romance is so cute and it's so well done. The characters are so well developed and so distinct. I loved her relationship with her sister and her friendships and the mental health representation was so good. The plot is so engaging. This story is so sweet and it's so heartwarming. 
I just really really enjoyed it so much it's such a good solid like rom-com type of vibe sometimes it even reminded me of prom pact like this book is excellent and I just really really enjoyed it so anyway with that said I rated this book four to five stars and I would definitely highly highly recommend it the last book on this list is called Lucy Uncensored. This story is a YA contemporary following a young transgender main character who's trying to navigate who she will become post high school. And honestly, I didn't really love this book as much as I appreciated like the queer representation and the transgender representation. Like I wasn't really pulled by this book, especially by Lucy as a character because I just found her to be selfish instead of being likable. Not to say that I didn't have sympathy for her as a transgender individual, obviously, but like overall, she just felt more annoying and selfish than anything else, if that makes any sense. And typically I don't say this about like a character driven YA contemporary story, but I was more interested in the plot than I was in the characters. It's like one last stop. Like I was more interested and emotionally invested in the side characters than I was in the main character. Although I do love like the theater elements and like that felt atmospheric and lovely. I don't know if anything I'm saying makes any sense at all, but like the representation was solid and it was awesome. The plot was engaging, like the best fun relationship was cool. The Goodreads synopsis though for me is rather misleading because I thought that the road trip would have a much more bigger impact on the plot than like the play did if that makes any sense but like anyway overall I rated this book three stars so take that as you will. So in conclusion I've read about 15 books this month and it's only October 8th so I really hope that the quantity as well as the quality of the books that I read for the rest of the month keeps up with that because it means that I'm on track to read more books in October than I did in September. So anyway, in conclusion, if you enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below the mango emoji because apparently I'm on a flute theme this month. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, thanks for watching, subscribe to my channel if you're new, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!